Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Maybe It's Spiritual. Thank you for joining us again. Uh, for those of you who are listening, obviously, you know, we are on Spotify, Apple. Go ahead and hit the five star. Leave us a review. Tell us how we're doing. We are on Instagram. Maybe it's spiritual. TikTok. Maybe it's spiritual. Uh, Gmail. Maybe it's spiritual. If you have a story you want to share yourself, you can hit us up on there. Maybe it's spiritual. Gmail.com. We have a YouTube um, yeah, and we added a little thing to our link tree called Buy Us a Drink. If you like what we do, we're an ad-free podcast. Send us some love. So, so excited tonight. We have the great Heidi Hollis. How are you, Heidi? I'm doing great. How are you guys? <laughs> doing well. Doing well. Awesome. Um, thank you so much for being on Maybe It's Spiritual. And um why don't you just tell us a little bit about yourself and plug all of your socials as well? Well, I do nothing. I don't know why I'm here. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like, wrong Heidi Hollis. <laughs> I got the wrong chick. Um, so I have been very busy. I'm always busy. I'm surrounded by my various books behind me. I am the author of everything from Angels to Aliens. Uh, I have eight books out there. I'm most known for being the first and only person to ever discover, name, define, and even trademark two paranormal phenomena um, that bridge UFOs, ufology, uh, the alien phenomena, and demonic, um, and that is shadow people and the hat man phenomenon. So um, I have been doing this stuff for a long time. I'm also the host of uh, Coast to Coast AM's Dark Becomes Light, which is a podcast where I'm answering all sorts of questions uh, that people have been experiencing out there, again, from angels to aliens. And, uh, you know, I'm never bored. I'm a cartoonist. I do a a paranormal comic strip that's called The Outlanders. And uh, I pull in elements from the paranormal into it and uh, the real stuff and make a joke of it because it's kind of funny all this stuff but i think uh what's what's most important for myself is uh i always have had an angle where i sprinkle some jesus on everything um (laughs) it's it you can't really dive into these things without realizing he's got a hand in some of this and can help you out so um I don't know how I've gotten away with it for so long, sprinkling him on everything that I do, but, you know, I got it all the way to the top with Coast to Coast. Um, and uh, I've been featured on a lot of different television shows like Ancient Aliens, uh, Strange Evidence, and you name it. Um, yeah, so uh, I enjoy myself. I am never bored. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, no, we're we're so happy to have you. You're. Huh. We have mentioned you probably on like, 75 percent of our podcasts what yeah yes. wow well so we started this with his brother telling his hat man story okay. and it our whole mission was to kind of normalize the paranormal things supernatural things that happen in people's lives and give a platform for them to tell their story you know unbiasedly take it from like their cool bar slash party story and get to like flush it out and hear like what happened to them, what they think it was, you know, and like all of us are Christian, but obviously the people who are talking to us aren't always. And so like, Mm -hmm. it's kind of interesting just to hear them talk it through and just kind of be a place where they can just share it without feeling crazy or feeling like, Oh, I can't tell this anymore. Cause judged judged. Yeah. So that's kind of like what we did, but as we've gone along, I don't know, like as far as guests go, like I don't want to say all of them, but most of them have a hat man experience, yeah. or a shadow person experience. And there's been a lot of like it became like the theme of our podcast inadvertently. Mm. And so like a lot of the research we've done was your from you. And like, oh, wow. Yeah. So it's just kind of like we've had a few people like not even know what the hat man was. I, our third episode ever, the guy, he like, kind of told me a one-off story that he never like kind of included in what he was going to say before and yeah hat man and we and matt pulled up a picture he's like did he look like this (laughs) it's like face pale he stayed two hours after the podcast i've said this i've said this like a story like a million times but he stayed for two hours afterwards because he was so scared wow like what it was but wow that's why we 
You want like, to talk, talk to I me? am so humbled. I'm I'm blown away. Like, wow, that's a, uh, oh, you know, this phenomenon is as bad as I was warned it would get to be, you know, and um, it's, it's horrible, you know, and it's sad that we, we got this problem at the level that we do. And people are like, you know, why, why something like this? Why something so evil? Why is this here? Because it was allowed to be here, you know? and uh people welcome it even so it's like how can we we say why would god allow such a thing to exist well you know god is everything god's created everything but we have free will and when i have people contacting me how do i conjure up the hat man again (laughs) oh no what's wrong with you guys it's crazy it's crazy so that's uh i'm not surprised um almost every paranormal program that's out there now i don't even have to watch it oh don't tell me hat man's coming or shadow people are coming yep. you know and uh i've watched the progression and it's it's disturbing to say the least and uh it's at a level where i i knew as i i hinted that you know i was warned i was told it would get to this level and um when it would get to that level apparently there's another shoe to drop and i'm not quite ready to speak on that part just yet but um hopefully very soon but oh man you know, yeah oh it, it's nothing i could have prepared for even i mean i'm i'm still shaken by it <laughs> to say the least it's crazy it's crazy stuff but um how um how did you come into for those listening like how did mm-hmm. you come into finding out about like the hat man and shadow people like obviously yeah. you must have had an experience oh man yeah a lot of people are like oh you know you did the first research on this i'm like now how can you research something no one's ever heard of first off uh i just gave it the name and i shared my story i was told oh you're nuts you know how could you you make up this name, you know, for, you know, the sci-fi phenomena, you know, that's in Babylon five, I was told. <laughs> it's like, you know, um, yeah, you can't research something that you just first spoke of and you just put word out. I got this information from something else. And that something else came in the form of beings, positive beings. For most people, they would look at it and say that's alien. But these beings spoke of God, <laughs> and they spoke of uh, Jesus being who he says he is, and that he's recognized throughout all universes. I was shocked <laughs> because I'd walked away from the thought of there being a man in a fluffy robe and sandals. All I knew is by memory, I'm supposed to say, uh, you know, in his name, if I want a prayer or wish to get to the guy that made me. I mean, I didn't regard him. Um, So it changed everything for me to be sitting there with my college roommate and uh, being told to give respect and uh, know that he's real. And um, I could go into some detail on that. It was just it was just so crazy. well, you told if, you you said some people would say they're aliens. Do you think they're angels? You know, I I asked them that. I said, you know, I don't see any wings. You look very much like a kind of when I when I think about it, he he kind of looked like a cherub without wings. You know, mm-hmm. kind of looked like a small child. And um, the the being that uh, we had the most interaction with, myself and my college roommate, just crazy. You know, um, and being schooled about God. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I was like, oh, my goodness, you know, what is all this? But, yeah, I think that potentially um, he told me that throughout time they've been called a lot of different things. And that is one of them. Uh, they were also ones that would assist in transferring souls out of a dying body, um, uh, allowing a, a person to just suffer needlessly. No, the soul is removed. Why do that? You know, um, our God is a, is a good God. You know, why? Why allow somebody to suffer when you know they're supposed to cross over? I'm like, but some people, I don't know, they're still twitching at the end, you know. Oh, that's just the body's reaction to the soul being removed, you know. And so, yeah, he spoke of uh, very, very um, um, 
I don't know, written things of ancient, of old, you know, I was like, what, you know, what am I dealing with here? I had no idea, but uh, got quite a education on it. <laughs> and how, how did these beings contact you? Were you guys like doing something you shouldn't have been doing or we're going to college um okay. you know, <laughs> i was in school i was working hard i'm an occupational therapist so uh i had some hard medical classes i was taking and uh she was an art major uh my my uh, college roommate her name is samantha and she was pentecostal super duper religious don't cut their hair you know and wear the big long skirts you know um and you know she moved into my apartment and at the time i was an art major then i switched over but she <laughs> she uh you know she's like uh, she knew i was into the topic of ufos because i'd seen some and she's like you know that's demonic whatever you know and she fell into the category of all my friends who only spoke of those things if they could make fun of me and the topic you know i'm like whatever you know um i belong to a ufo group um and she thought all those people were devil worshippers and whatever. So long story short, one day, broad daylight, she goes driving to her college, which is different from mine. And she calls me in a panic, just, oh my God, oh my God. And I'm like, what? You know, she's Puerto Rican. She had a really thick accent. She's talking really fast. I don't speak any Spanish. I'm like, whoa, whoa, slow it down. What's going on? And she's like, this being, this being, it jumped on my car and it started talking to me. And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know what she's talking about. Um, so for time's sake, I'm going to skip a lot of stuff. We meet up after class and we're sitting uh, Lake Michigan in Milwaukee, Wisconsin on the lake. And I'm like, so tell me what happened. You know, here's one of my closest friends getting hip to something weird, you know. And uh, and she starts telling me about this 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 uh, crystal gel like creature that jumped on the hood of her car. And uh, she said, you know, like when you go to the dentist and your mouth goes numb. And I said, yeah, she's like, my mouth went numb and I had a real calming effect to it. And my mouth started slapping up and down, answering me it, like it was coming from me, Heidi. And I'm like, OK, what? You know, I didn't understand. I didn't understand. Um, it was just really bizarre. But again, skipping a few levels. <laughs> Well, she's talking to me. She goes, Heidi, Heidi, I, I got to meditate. I got to meditate. And I'm like, you got to meditate right here in the car. And I'm like, I didn't know she did that. I'm thinking, I don't know what's going on. I'm like, should I get out of the car, leave you alone or something? She closes her eyes for a few moments and her accent reduced. And she says, hello, I've been waiting to speak to you for a very long time. And I'm like, Samantha, you know, what's going on? You know, stop playing with me, girl. What, what, what is this? And, uh, and it's like, oh no, this is not Samantha. And I'm like, okay. And then she comes back with her, you know, thick accent, and she's like, they're showing me something. They're showing me something. And she's she's telling me what it is. And uh, and um, this being comes back to say what it's it, who it is that it's a being that's come here to introduce me to things. And um, and I'm just like blown away. I'm like, I said, oh, you're an alien. Now I'd sat in on. Uh, hypnotic regressions for people that have been abducted before. And when people are speaking of their experiences, sometimes uh, the being speaks through them. So I've seen something like this before on a few occasions, but this is really different because this is my you know closest friend and it was she's not into this topic at all. Um, so <laughs> this being is, is saying I'm an alien. I'm like, oh, really? You know, I'm like, I'm thinking she's pulling my leg, but I'm then I remember she was crying on the phone. She was in such a panic. We're down here, sitting here talking about this. And uh, and I, I just, I didn't, I, my mind was just searching. It was just searching. And uh, this this being says, I'm in a ship high up. And I said, well, let me see your ship, you know? And well, I can't because your government knows how to shoot us down now. Oh, okay. And I'm trying to humor this conversation, but I'm literally pressed up against the door, ready to jump out of the car. Absolutely. And uh, <laughs> and and this being says, oh, but hold on. I think I'm close enough to project an image of myself. And that's when I became an absolute believer. <laughs> I was talking to something because the car started to hum. And this small child, it was itty bitty, like little itty bitty um pink fleshy creature appeared in the car seat uh, between us. And 
I was like, oh, okay, okay, okay. I see you. I believe you. I believe you. I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, oh I, I couldn't, you know, it was just mind blowing, just mind blowing. So, um, that was the introduction. This, these things came full force through my friend, uh, and just, you know, blew, blew my mind. Um, and, and it was wild, you know, when she pops back, she's like, that just happened. I'm like, it did. I just saw that, <laughs> you know? And we're like, go drive back to our apartment. And we're like, and she's, she doesn't like reading uh, English stuff. She starts grabbing all my, um, my UFO books. And she's like, there's gotta be an answer here somewhere, you know? <laughs> and she wanted to talk to all my, uh, you know, UFO friends and just like, she was just blown away. It changed everything. And us being college kids were like, can you do it again? Yeah. <laughs> I would have a lot of questions, you know, you know, I'm like, this is amazing. And um, again, long story short, I, you know, she did, she was able to do this again and again. And I'm like asking all sorts of questions. What are the numbers to the lottery? You know, of course, of course. you know, it's like, I want to know all this stuff. And, and here I'm asking and, and the, the answer was usually, well, it would not benefit you to know that, you know, and it was very different kind of way that she would use her voice, you know, because I know it's not her. And she's talking about things that, you know, DNA and stuff that she wouldn't know uh, about. And she had no idea about, and I was like, what the heck? But, um, it wasn't until we had all these blocked uh, questions. It would not benefit you to know that where I'm from. You wouldn't know what star and how far and where it's located. And it was just like it kept giving all these reasons as to why it's not going to answer. And then I was just shooting darts, essentially. You know, oh, I'm going to just start talking about whatever to this being because he's not answering anything. I thought we had the answers to the universe only to get blocked. And, um, and that's when I shared the strange dream I had that seemed so real. I, could, I couldn't believe it didn't happen. And I saw the moon coming uh, towards the planet like it was going to hit us. And then all of a sudden a ship popped up in front of it and pulled the moon at an angle so it didn't hit us. And uh, I expressed this dream to this being that's speaking through my friend. And uh, it was the first answer that I got that said, we don't do dreams, but I'll tell you, the darkness in your planet was pulling the moon towards your planet. We saw it and we pulled it at an angle so it would not destroy you. You call them shadow people. We call them shadows. And that started the whole whirlwind of what? You know, the whole purpose of why he'd shown up as he did and answered so many questions. Wow. So had you had a shadow person or a Hatman experience before that? I had shadow people. Yes, I had a lot of them. Um, Hatman did not come at me. Now, a lot of the images that you see online of Hatman and shadow people were stolen from my friend who drew those. <laughs> so uh, those are all hers, the, the original Hatman drawing that you see everywhere. Um, that, that's on the cover of my book. Yeah. 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 Um, that one. Yep. Uh, because she's seen him. She saw him. Yeah. I thought she was being murdered. I'd never heard a movie scream before in real life in the middle of the night. And I came running to her room and, you know, I, it just gives me chills because I'll never forget the look on her face of horror. as she tried to make herself as small as she could in the corner of the room cowering pointing shakily couldn't even breathe to talk uh and she's just the first words the man the man i'm like the man i'm like i'm thinking somebody broke in i'm like where is he at you know it's like a, <laughs> You're no it's just as she drew him and that has um yeah that's what started that phenomenon oh goodness is that samantha that drew him yes yeah oh wow her wonderful copyrighted images that have been ripped off forever. <laughs> oh, yeah. Google image search the hat man and see him. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, she's yeah. Yeah, so it was a crazy, crazy experience. And, um, you so know, full, tell, them, tell them where they can mm -hmm. read the full story because I've read it and. Mm -hmm. but uh, it well, that book is called The Secret War. That was the first one I wrote while I was in college still. 
Um, the original subtitle was The Heaven Speak of the Battle, um, but now it's a real alien war between shadow and shadow people. Um, so that book, I pulled it out of print. I'm like, oh, this thing's been out there forever. And uh, I wanted to take it off from that publisher. And now I'm like, I keep getting demands like crazy. Put it back in print. It's as an ebook only right now. Um, so I'll put it back into print and do That's an audio book too. <laughs> it's like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Audiobook would be great. I would love that. Yes, I will do that. Um, yes. Crazy or, stuff. Oh, I was going to say so. So Jesus was not really a part of your your day to day life at that point, um, no. like you said earlier. And then, I it would I would love it if you would share <laughs> the story at the at that you added at the end yeah. of the Secret War. <laughs> that that story was was so cool. I'd love if, if you would share it. Yes. Okay. So this part. I'm painfully honest. I can't help but to be painfully honest. And so that book was written in 1997. It took me two months to write that book and four years to find it, uh, to get it published. And I had distributed it to all these other authors and radio show hosts and these paranormal topics because those are only people that were publishing books then. I was in college. I was busy. I didn't know how to get it published. So in the meantime, I'm editing this book for four years, you know, tweaking it here and there. And um, Matt, I'll tell you, I I had seen so many things at that stage. My place was just so active and I'd seen so much and I'd seen angelic beings. And for as long as I've, I can recall, probably my earliest memory uh, was being in a, in a, in a heaven like place that I still go to. Um, so I'd seen, and I'd seen a lot. And so, and then I'm, you know, hearing people talking about Jesus and their piece of toast <laughs> and a tree <laughs> trunk. And I was so irritated. I'm like, I, and I was like, if Jesus were around, I think I would have seen him by now. I essentially bashed people who claim to have seen Jesus in that book. Okay. <laughs> And you don't you don't see that version of the book because I during that four years of me editing it is when I met him myself and I had to eat my words and clear that out. I was like, oh, I see a hippo in the clouds. I was like, people are thinking they're seeing Jesus walking around. No, you know, I was wrong. I was wrong. I was very skeptical and yeah, I had my faith. I was raised Methodist. Um, I, but it was all memory, not heart, you know, and he shook up everything. I would have never anticipated in my life to see him. Um, but when he did, I just threw it in there because it was the, the truth. So the experience was I'd come home from work and uh, I told my college roommate, turn the TV down. I'm going to take a nap. And, uh, you know, when you get on your bed, you move your pillows or blankets or something, you know. Um, I went to lay on that bed and I swear to you, and I get goosebumps every time I say this. It's like I put my head on that bed and I hit the floor. Boom. I'm like, oh, how did I miss the bed? <laughs> I'm like, oh, how embarrassing, you know, like getting up. I'm like, where am I? I mean, it, it's just, uh, I, I was in front of my parents' home and I couldn't remember how I got there. And I'm just like, I didn't hit my head when I hit the floor, you know? And I, I just remember... <laughs> trying to like make sense of how I got there. I was supposed to meet a family friend there by the name of Quincy. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, Heidi, you're going to meet Quincy here. You're here for this basketball game. And, and <laughs> it's like, I was doing anything to try to understand why I'm standing in front of my parents' home. And uh, I, my parents have kind of a long driveway and I look down and I see this man walking up the driveway and um i'm like yeah yeah here comes quincy now that's right this here comes quincy and i mean oh it didn't take long recognition hit me and i just 
I'm a silly person. I palm the fist. I'm like, oh my god! I'm like, I'm like, you know, who is this? Come, I'm like, I knew who it was, and he got right up in front of me, and I was palming my face, and uh, he said hello, like he's gonna talk about the weather or something, and I'm like, hello. <laughs> like I wouldn't look. I wouldn't look. I wouldn't look. And then he goes, Do you know who I am? And he said, if you knew who I was, you would not hesitate to say it. And I'm like, he's calling me out. I'm like, oh, you know, and I took my hands away and I'm like, you're Jesus. And I was stuttering. I was absolutely stuttering. I don't speak Spanish. I took German for six years. I said, Jesus. (laughs) I have never had those words come out of my mouth before. And he said, yes, I am. And this man rose off the ground Whew. and it's just the, the, oh, the goosebumps and just off white robes and uh, bright light from behind him shadowed his face. And he started talking about his life and how so much needed to be done. And he's ta- he's talking and I'm like getting images, but it's like music and his words and all this stuff and it's coming right fast. And and I'm still myself going, oh, my gosh, I'm here. He's here. Oh, how is this possible? I'm like, I'm hitting my leg. I am pinching myself. And I'm like, you are really here. And he is really here, Heidi. And I'm like, I'm not paying attention fully because I'm blown away and I'm as I'm touching my leg, I touch the, the ground and I'm like, why is the ground so close? And I'm like, I'm on my knees. I don't even remember falling to my knees. And um, he paused as if he knew I wasn't paying attention. And um, and I was like, I stuttered again because I was caught. And I was like, whoa, 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 what do you want me to do, you know? And he said, first, you need to show us some things. And I'm looking around and I don't see anybody but him. And I'm like, oh, he's talking about his dad. I'm like, oh, my gosh. (laughs) You know, I was just blown. Oh, my gosh. And um, he told me, you need to finish writing your book. Do not worry what other people say. Know that I'll be there to give you the words. And um, I I just... (laughs) That meant the world to me, those words. And then, you know, skipping some parts, but he was about to leave. And I'm like, ask him something, Heidi, ask him something. I'm like, (laughs) and I asked him the strangest question. And I said, what's my real name? And he laughed at me (laughs) as he faded. And he said, I love you very much, Ilya. And um, yeah, uh, that's. I, and I knew like he was he was leaving. I was coming back into my body. Now it's in the middle of the afternoon. It's like probably twelve thirty in the afternoon, broad daylight. I was taking a nap to go do something else after work, and I was like, I I didn't hit the floor. I was laying in that bed, and I mean that love that comes off from him can't be beat, and uh, just beautiful just beautiful but uh yeah sorry matt was a lot to share because it is uh oh, it changed exactly everything right. <laughs> changed everything what was that no that was exactly what i wanted to hear thank you for sharing that that's yeah. yeah and you know one thing people don't realize i was extremely bashful shy i would not speak even in my classes to get a presentation score i just got straight A's in school so I could take that dink for not doing the public speaking, but, and Jesus knew this. And, uh, so (laughs) the only reason I speak today is because I look to the heavens before I do every interview or every lecture. And I'm like, you promised me you give me the words and I'm holding you to it because I have nothing to say. (laughs) So he's only reason, um, you know, only reason. So Oof. that's, that's incredible. I, it's, man, I'm, I'm kind of speechless. Yeah, I am kind of speechless. Um, well, it gets so deeper. <laughs> it does get deep. 
so while all this is happening, so you've got kind of a lot of um, a lot of different beings visiting you, including yeah. Jesus. Oh, she should tell the the Bigfoot story. <laughs> Have you heard that? You're just like tell the story. Have you heard that tell one? Story. No, I haven't heard the Bigfoot story. Oh, that's is crazy. Is that the Secret War too? Yeah, that's a good question. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't well, maybe it was one of your podcasts I listened to. Oh, it could be. Yeah, it's. I took stuff out of the Secret War book. I wish I hadn't. Um, so I can't remember what I left in fully or, or took out. But I, oh, with this other shoe to drop, I should have left it. Um, which I might put it back for the newer ver- when I put it back into print. There's so much, guys, that you can't even imagine how much stranger can it get, you know? But we like yeah. we like on this show we like we like strange, and I think through all our research we've kind of found that all these things have a common thread. Yes, they all have a common thread, and um, yeah, alien, Bigfoot, shadow people. Hmm. Yeah. Giant. Giant. Sorry. The one guy we always get into debates about the Nephilim. Ah. That's pretty, yeah. That's one. But um but we're not gonna get into it tonight. We're not gonna get into the Nephilim tonight. Okay. But no. mm-hmm. we can if you want to. But um, <laughs> anyway, but no, I just I seem to there seems to be like a common thread between all of these different things, and a lot of them end up being like synonymous, you know, when people mm-hmm. have, you know alien encounters or ufo encounters you know bigfoot show up and shadow people show up yeah and like just from listening to so many different things i um there was a podcast called into the fray with shannon legro i don't know if you ever heard of that one I... but um she had this police officer that told a story about that mm. and it all had to do with like that was the first time that it ever like occurred to me that like were like ufo shadow people lost time you know, government people show up. Yes. It was, it just all made this huge connection. And I was like, okay, so there's, yeah. there's something, some of these things are like after effects. So. Oh, it, it goes so deep. Um, that's something that I, I speak to as well. It's like uh, the, the connectivity between all of these things, the, the alien abductions, uh, why these different beings? So, you know, it's the praying mantis. It's the, you know, anything that's abusive and, and snatching a person. That's not good. <laughs> it's not good. Right. I've sat in those groups. I had a group for 15 years, a UFO group of people sleeping with guns under their pillow for when the aliens come. And to watch those people change their conversation to be, I'm chosen. I'm special. This is why it's happening. Whereas before, they're demons. They're this, this, you know, it's, uh, it's sad, you know, but I, people do what they have to to survive. And I try not to poo poo people for what they believe to be true for themselves. But I, if they can't stay under the name of Jesus, there's a problem. <laughs> you know, why do they run when you say that name? Aliens running. Why? Right. You know, um, I'd say that's a, a big tell, you know, that don't have your best interest. Yeah. And you're starting to see you're starting to hear that more, even in like completely secular like podcasts and shows that like when people have like a like a really frightening encounter with whatever it is Mm -hmm. they invoke the name of jesus and everything flees like everything like bows to that name to his name yes that's really really cool and that tells you i don't know kind of gives you that reassurance that like yeah this is this is the right he really is the way the truth and the life it really is and it's like i couldn't believe that i had to go back to that practice of sitting on a church pew to get answers i mean i was in outer space like whoo i'd seen some stuff you know and i'm like hold on i just practiced to sit still i wasn't listening you know it's like so i was shocked to have an alien so-called alien being schooling me and um and they and do you know that I wasn't allowed to take notes? I wasn't allowed to record. I wasn't allowed to do any of those things. These beings told me very distinctly 
what we're going to tell you is going to change the world. I'm like, yeah, right. I got to go to school now. Bye. You know, <laughs> it, it is like, no, you don't understand. And I said, you know, and I was really like, anybody else doing this? Cause I'm like, I'm really busy, you know? And it's like, sure. We've sent others, but they get busy too. They want to do this. They want to do that. And, um, we just hope that somebody gets this done. And I'm like, dang it. Oh, okay. You know, I'm here, I'm doing it. Um, but then it got, you know, hello, Jesus shows up, but that was a little bit later. Um, but I got my memories back as well, which was just changed again as a whole new level, but nothing beats Jesus, but (laughs) no, nothing beat those experiences. But I had an experience that, you know, I'd never even heard of this before. And I've been doing this for a while now. And I've talked and interviewed so many people trying to find answers to this. And, you know, I haven't come across anybody that knows what I'm talking about that's experienced this. Um, You've heard of people have near death experiences or and they remember a past life through hypnosis or something. Um, I was sitting on my purple futon with my roommate, Samantha, (laughs) and I had to go pee. So I got up to go walk across the living room (laughs) and I'm just talking to her. Oh, yeah, girl. All right. Yeah, sure. And I'm going to go into the restroom. And I wasn't in my living room anymore. And um, I I, this is this doesn't make any sense to me, but I was looking at a scene in space. And um, I saw what it was a spinning sun in the middle of space. And I felt like it was the center of the universe. And there was another red spinning light. And I knew everything got recorded there. And there were trillions upon trillions of, of smaller lights in this big spinning sun. And I knew each of those lights was a soul, right? And thoughts, ideas, um, goals, missions, whatever, would pass through this love soup of light and every light would contribute to it. And it would, the thought would go to the center and would become one, right? And I was one of those lights. I mean, this sounds so strange, but I was one of those lights. And the thought came by of literally a mission that needed to be done. And I remember casually saying, eh, I guess that's something I could do. It was like everybody took a step back in line. It's like she said she'd do it. And it's like I felt like I got grabbed, not grabbed, but just thrown out of this love suit, perfect balance of love uh, into this cold space, outer space, and going off to get trained, if you will, schooled. One of the places being this crystal city, I call it, that I, I've seen since I was a kid. Um, and I'm back. I'm standing in the middle of the liter- living room and uh, and I'm going, oh, how could I forget? How could I forget? How could I forget? And I go to sit down on my futon and my friend goes, forget what? To use the bathroom? You didn't go. <laughs> like, And I was like, how could I forget who I am and what I came here for? And, and then it's like, and I'm, I'm like matching up my life to where I was supposed to be. And I'm like, oh, what am I doing in college? I didn't come here to be a therapist. I walked over to the phone to, to cancel my classes. And my friend's like, hold on, hold on. Wait, what is, what is going on here? And I'm like, <clears throat> and I described to her that I knew this place. Like I knew the back of my hand and I knew that I didn't come here to settle down, get married, have children, all that. I said, I came here to to warn people about this threat and to also bring people back to their understanding of what faith is, you know, among other things. And uh, and it's one thing to be told, oh, I'm a psychic. You are this, you are that. I knew within the heart of me that what I came here for, I knew I knew and I knew that spinning sun to be called the source. People say source. Oh, source tells me. I don't know what that is. All I know is the spinning sun 
was a part of God. It wasn't God, but it's like a, a love soup of healing in our souls where they gather and connect. Um, I'd never heard of it before that. Uh, I never saw anything like that before. Um, but I was stunned to learn later on that the number one symbol for God among indigenous tribes all over the world was a spinning sun. <laughs> I didn't know that. Um, yeah, so I, I mean, so it was so clear in my in my understanding what what I came here to do um, and to just get that back. But again, it's like, I know this world. People don't get that. I don't take drugs. I'm not a drinker. Um, you know, I'm a, I'm a therapist for crying out loud. And it's like, I know what it sounds like, but I know what I know to be true for myself. And it's not to prove to anybody anything, but it gave me a very uh, strong set of, I, I know what I need to be doing in this life. It, it's a miracle. I finished school because ever since that moment of remembering, I miss it so bad. It's hard to be here knowing of that. And the closest that I've ever heard are near death experiencers who say the same once they've seen and been there and felt that uh, this place is really hard. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So what are you, what are you warning people again? Oh, nice mug. <laughs> What do you yeah. uh, shameless plug there? The shameless <laughs> plug. I love that. Um, what are you What are you telling people? What are you warning them against? You know, there is a problem. There is a threat. Um, this is an ancient darkness. I mean, it, it's uh, you know, it's so weird for me. Even when I say it's biblical, but it is biblical. Uh, it, 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 this darkness infiltrates in every aspect and it's here to limit mankind from evolving and people don't know this part, uh, but I do talk about it as much as I can on my podcast is, uh, you know, it's like, well, why me? Why is this, why are these things attacking me? Because the most gifted and, and ones on the cusp of evolving, are the ones they try to scare and control and limit. So it's usually that the person is gifted versus what did they do to deserve it? Um, they saw you had something and they don't want to see that. So if you look at this planet as being part of a bigger something and the inhabitants are too, it goes through phases and it evolves. Um, and, uh, if there's a darkness that wants to control the masses, why do they want, they wouldn't want you to be able to see them to defend yourself. They got the upper hand. Um, so it's to warn people about that threat, but to also bring that understanding together. God is real. <laughs> Aliens have souls. <laughs> you know, we think our pets have souls, perhaps the ant crawling down. They've got a consciousness of some kind, right? Imagine something flying a ship. Of course, it's got a soul. So can it be infiltrated? If you could believe in the exorcist movie, why can't they have that problem? And that is what these things are. These things are possessing beings. Some of these alien beings that are causing harm to people. And, um, but there's help. And I, I think, you know, people are like, well, why would Jesus show up to you? Because he, he's come up. Uh, I, I wrote a book about it called Jesus is no joke. Um, Cause that's all I kept telling people after I saw him the first time, especially. Um, but I think he came because he knew uh, I know how to keep humor in my life and uh, just keep, keep it brutally honest. Like it happened. He's real and uh, be able to blend and understand and keep your faith in the face of this paranormal and UFO and alien conversation and, and not feel ridiculous for it. And, and I think, uh, you know, a lot of people, they think they're too smart for God. Oh, God can't be real. Cause look at my video game. Oh man. <laughs> yeah. Trip. Like you ain't going to go far. Where do you go when you die? That's the only time when they contemplate, I lost my mom. Well, where'd she go? <laughs> Since you're a god yourself, you should be able to tell me, you know. Yeah. Uh, they they crack me up with they're all gods now. I'm like, really? Did you decide to put that mole on your forehead like that? Because <laughs> that was a bad choice, you know. 
It's like, <laughs> dear God. Okay. <laughs> That's Silly. the cosmetic God. Not the yeah, cosmetic right? God. Makes no That's sense. Clear. No, I just, yeah, there's just, okay, so with all of the, like, I don't know, alien exposure and all of this stuff going mm-hmm. on right now, does this coincide with your mission, I'm assuming? Yes, it does. And, um, you know, it, I've talked to a lot of people involved in the government. Um, they like to search us people out in this field, whether they tell you they are or not. Um, like my dad, that was fun to find out. Um, <laughs> it's like, you just can't make this stuff up, but, uh, your yeah. Dad? Yeah. What's going on with your dad? Oh, it's a big story. <laughs> I'm still breaking it down. Um, yeah, he was something <laughs> he was, he ran a NORAD station. How do you keep that secret? How do you keep that secret? I mean, wow, that's amazing. He was just an airplane mechanic, according to him, you know. Whew. Yeah, he didn't say anything. My um my my older brother, he brought him on base when he was a toddler. Three years old. He didn't think he'd have a memory. Well, <laughs> I learned. I learned. So it's it's a lot more to the story that uh I'm still diving into myself. So I'll have to chat about that some other time, but it's okay. It's a lot, but um, but one thing to to know with my dad and others involved at the government level. Funny how they are they're Christians still. How do they keep faith knowing aliens exist? How's that possible? Why? Why? <laughs> if you know the truth, you know aliens fly. Okay, that's cool. You probably went out there to space and took a look even, and you still believe there's a God. That's really fascinating. So why are they keeping their faith? Yeah. So do you, so, okay. With extraterrestrials, aliens, are they, are they angels? Or are there separate angels? Um, You know, I wish I could say I have all the answers, but I do know that some of these, some of these beings do identify as um, helping God, being workers for God. Um, I know that's uh, by the actions, you'll know by their actions that they're not good. Um, If I had a friend kept coming over and smacking me upside the head and I was like, quit that. I didn't invite you over to do that. You know, um, I wouldn't want him over. And these beings are abusing people and then give them a cookie at the end. Like, oh, well, all is forgiven. Oh, you came back and you hit me again. That's not okay. Uh, we have to be able to distinguish this stuff, right? Um, right absolutely. You know, craziness, just craziness. No, it is craziness. But it's just, it's interesting how it all correlates. And it's interesting how people, you know, they're like, oh, well, there's good and there's bad. You know, like, where, where do you think, like, god and and satan like mm-hmm. fall into all these categories like it's okay i'm just gonna ask it like do you think the hat man is satan uh he tells people he's the devil he tells people he's the devil himself and uh you know what's really disturbing oh when i started getting these reports that you know he would say i you know i'm sam or or whatever but now he calls himself hat man now, in every Exorcist uh, movie, they say, tell me your name. And, and I hold that trademark for the hat man name. Oh, I'm just making my parents proud. I named the devil. That's messed up. He's literally using that name now. Um, he used to say his name is Scratch, you know, the old Norse term for him, for the devil. And yeah, he says he is. He does. And uh by his actions, you know, think about it. Why doesn't he change his look? He changes it a little bit, but he wants people to get a good look and see that they're all experiencing him. He doesn't have to be seen, but he's making sure people get a good look. And um, it's it's really as bad as you can imagine. And, oh, guys, I just, I, I'm like in the midst of learning some new things and it's just so bizarre. You can't even imagine. Yeah. That's so much. So 
uh two questions so one how many how many hatman stories do you think you've heard over the course of your time receiving stories and when was what's the earliest like sighting or experience of the hat man that you would attribute to the hat man that you have heard about mm. well the first night that i went on coast to talk about it so it was aol right and when you got emails they it, it would delete right I couldn't, you have to save your emails so they don't delete. I was getting them in the hundreds and trying to save, 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 delete. Hundreds, save, delete. They're all gone. Thousands. I got thousands that first night, probably 10,000 emails the first night I spoke of them. Um, and I couldn't do it fast enough. I couldn't do it fast enough. Uh, over the years, that's, oh my, it's, too many thousands i can't even imagine um oh and to think that they warned me it would get to a level like this i didn't uh i couldn't imagine it because again i was the only person i knew talking about this and giving it this name um and now to sit back and see i, I had a ufo group called ufo2u.com so number two letter u.com and it was always the top 100 ufo websites out there when people first got websites right so all my emails were on aliens and ufos and all this stuff i put up one image of the shadow people when i was allowed to by these beings by the way all my emails shifted to be shadow people i put up the hat man image 99 percent uh have been about him for the most part ever since so the progression of what's happening is f absolutely it's very scary and uh you know people are like are we in the end times and i'm like gosh i hope not we're gonna lose too many idiots i mean i'm sorry people that don't realize that there's a god because they're all gods now and you know there's no judgment I heard of near death experiences. There's no judgment. I'm like, yeah, judgment day's not here yet. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's a coming. But you know, I'm I'm scared. I I'm scared for us. Every single person that we lose is a loss. It, you think of your if you have a kid or a niece or nephew, and and they never want to speak to you again, and you will never see them again. Think how God feels. So. We got to help open up people's eyes and um, hope that people stop finding uh, a reason not to believe. I get it. The Catholic priests messed up huge over and over again. Um, but why was their faith just put on the man in the robe? I don't see how it, the, the, the stranger Wiccans and supernaturalist people that I know were they all say they're recovering Catholics, recovering from what happened. I'm like, why did you leave your faith? Because of them. You got to shake it off. Jesus isn't going to sit there or God's not going to say, oh, I get it. Yeah, you should have left because, yeah, they messed up. No, it's on us, individual. I, um, my father-in-law had, like, sent this podcast to me called um, Ancient Conspiracies. If you've not checked that out, I think it would be right up your alley. Okay. This lady puts everything together in a very interesting way. But she mentions the Catholic Church and she mentions their like affiliation with like extraterrestrials and things mm -hmm. like that. Because they oh. seem to have a very, very strong interest in it. Especially like nowadays in our the current Pope. He seems yeah. to be very interested. And um I don't know. I could see why it could deter some people. I could see why on upper <laughs> level that seems that obviously has to come down to some level and not to, not to say anything against people who are Catholic, you know, like there's plenty of yeah. Catholic Christians out there, but like there seems to be like a darker side to it. Uh, yeah. Um, you know, my friend, uh, Dr. Diana Pasolka, I was really um, impressed with her knowledge, of course. I mean, she's like really something in understanding um, 
what's the inner workings i mean she got into the secret vaults of the vatican you know that's amazing and uh you know some of her understandings of, of what she saw down there you know they were ufo like reports when they essentially were i mean uh danny sheehan um the constitutional lawyer he speaks of how he got in the vatican vaults and holy smokes he saw photos of craft down there ufos so when they own the most powerful uh telescope uh, observatory in the world you, you know what they're looking at right it isn't just to look at the, the stars what are they looking right. at you know they named it lucifer come on i'm sorry they renamed it lucy now um oh, they <laughs> yeah they named it lucy and they said look we didn't name this yeah okay but it's a uh, they're very much aware they know and it's like should we be tied up with words to say alien versus angelic i i think we just have a different choice of word they know the truth of it and um i'm worried about as the uap conversation moves forward all these people are like but what of god god's in this still uh, we just have different titles and he has different workers and but the Bible describes creatures. They don't sound like fluffy angel winged people. So, um, right. you know. Yeah, a lot of them sound horrifying. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they, they usually say, do not be afraid before they speak to you. So like, <laughs> you know, like, I don't swingy. do that. I don't, right. I don't do that usually. To go walk up to anybody. Don't be afraid right now. <laughs> don't be afraid. I'm, <laughs> my spinning funny. wheels won't come out. Don't worry. Yeah. But... Um, <laughs> Yeah, no, I just think that there's, I don't know, there's a lot going on with this stuff. So you yeah. think, okay, what what do you, okay, what is the connection between alien and shadow people? Like, what's going on there? What is, uh, are, uh, I've heard a no. lot of different people mm-hmm. have a lot of different theories about what shadow people are. Like, oh, it's like us from a future time or it's this, you know, the, I've heard all sorts of, all sorts of stuff. Wow. What, what's the connection? Yeah. Have you heard that one? That's what. I, I've the things that people say, and again, they think I just came up with this stuff. Uh, I did not. Um, the beings told me this is comes from a dark source. We come from a lighter source, the creator, you know, uh, these things to get their energy from something else. And it has opposed other beings. We are not the first ones. And this is just what it does. It's like, why, well, why would it do that? It's like, because it can, why would it, Napoleon do what he did? He wanted the land and the power. These things are not much different from ourselves. Um, but they go a little bit darker and deeper because they have us turn on each other. Um, yeah. and, uh, it, it's, it's a deeper, uh, infiltration, unfortunately. So they get two souls for one effort. You know, it's like, oh, yeah, I got you to kill your brother. But it's it's um, it's it's a basic drive, but it is evil. It is twisted. It it does anything to get you to lose who you are and our full potential. Um, but if you look at the aliens, you look at the shadow people. What do they do? They're both cowards. First off, I love insulting them. Um, they like to come. Oh, she's knocked out and she's sleeping. I'm going to creep in now. Ooh, the lights are off. Okay. Paralyzed. Got you now. It's like, oh my, what a, but knock on the front door in broad daylight. Let me get a good look at you and take me on for who I am. But they can't, they can't. So what's wrong with that? Um, So there's a problem because people believe they're paralyzed, but if they call on their opposing force, even I, I had a person that wrote me and said, they made the sign of the cross with their tongue on the roof of their mouth and were able wow. to break free of the paralysis because they couldn't get the word Jesus out. So they right. did a sign of the cross. I was like, that's amazing. So um, it's that that power is that force is something to be reckoned with. Yeah. So I, I've had I had a, a shadow person. I, I think I would classify it as a shadow person, but it was like a a physical form one mm-hmm. like it was a shared experience with so that's something that happened to me in this uh it's my ex-girlfriend from college but like we saw one like in the fo- like in the physical like it mm-hmm. wasn't like in a corner and it wasn't at night it was like in broad broad daylight 
And we we saw this and it it scared her so bad that she locked herself in a like in her bathroom for like two hours. Oh, but it was like like nothing I have ever experienced as far as like things go. But we were in this state park and it's kind of a, a longer story, but pretty much it chased us out of the woods. And it was it looked like the form of a man, but just like like a head and arms and it dangled, but it had no feet and it hovered above the ground and, mm. you, and it, it chased us. And it was like, we, when we finally turned around and saw it, it was hovering above the ground. Ugh. And it was like, but it was, it was bobbing is so creepy how it, it like bobbed back and forth about a foot off the ground. And then mm-hmm. it whizzed away. And like, you could see the leaves moving. Like it physically took a form. That's disturbing. So that would be, like that guy. Yes, it was something like it was something along those lines, except it had it was like it had it looked like the shape of a person like that. Yes. Yeah. I call that the head and shoulder shadow. Yeah. <laughs> and it, had, it just went down. It was just like a torso and like no legs, just like that. Yeah, like that. Yes. But it was yeah. broad daylight and we saw this thing. And like that was like probably the one time I'd saw anything like that. And that scared that was, her. It didn't scare a- me as much, but it scared her. It's funny because that was the very first one I saw too. It was like that. So the head and shoulder shadow and he confronted me. Oh, wow. It was crazy. I'm curious if Margaret's got a question over there. <laughs> Margaret. Yeah. Um, I It's kind of on a, we've already maybe talked past it, but I can't, I don't know. I'm kind of caught up on it. It's okay. Um, so I guess my question is, so the way that I was kind of raised around all these kinds of ideas is that aliens are demons and that's that. That's kind of how I was raised. Um, and your encounter with Samantha and that uh, entity like speaking through her, like for me, that's like that doesn't sit right with me. I feel like that feels really evil and maybe that's because I don't know enough because I'm just sitting here. I'm learning like a lot that I did not know before. And maybe that's just coming from a place of naive, naivete or whatever. But I guess, have you ever like looked back on it and think, Oh, that was weird. Like, why did it need to speak through her? You know? Mm-hmm. Well, you know, uh, I had some people that said in the past, well, she's possessed. I'm yeah. like, she had full uh, control. Mm-hmm. She popped back in right away because when uh, I was like, well, who's talking? She pops back. I see a symbol, Heidi. I see a triangle with a line through it. And I was like, well, what's that supposed to mean? The voice comes back and it spelled its name, C-A-F-T-H. And I was like, oh, so she could always pop back. Um, And again, this is a very religious person, Pentecostal. I don't think I met anybody so religious in my life, to be honest. but it's interesting the the parts that we did look back on mm-hmm. it was other experiences that she was having cuz we were in the shared apartment and we had lights going through glowing orbs like visually uh beings that would sh- poke its head out of the wall and push its head back through uh we experienced a lot of strange things there and um it was it was just so much um but when she looked back on some of the things she experienced she's like heidi remember i told you i had a really strange experience where i had the she she had this just before the being spoke uh, to her and through her she's like i was taken on this this spiritual journey and she described uh being shown her soul Mm. and she had all these black spots on it and said you need to be cleansed and was uh speaking of of god like things to her and and then and she had to experience the pain she did to other people kind of like a life review almost and uh ask for forgiveness and she and then they showed her her soul again and it was clean again mm-hmm. and it was right after that the being came to speak through her and she was reminded of remember when we cleaned your soul you needed to be cleansed in order to speak to workers of God. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> so it was um, it was full circle in so many ways and, and shook me up to 
rethink my spirituality, my belief in God, because uh, they called me out on it. It, it. it was just, it was so much. It was so much. And I, and it's so odd to me because um, there's a lot that I've forgotten of that time because we weren't allowed to write it down. They said the information would die with us um, if we put it on paper, if we did this or that. I'm like, but you want me to write a book? I'm busy in school. And they said, when you go to sit down to write, pray. Pray and we will protect the material on the computer. And they told me to bless the screen. I mean, this is there beings talking about God, you know? And um, if I thought I was being steered in the wrong direction to speak about Jesus throughout my whole career of this, <laughs> I think that's my answer to say that it was all for the right reasons because here I am with Coast, the number one you know, program on the world on the paranormal, you know, and uh, they let me talk about Jesus. <laughs> you know, it's kind of kind of wild. <laughs> um, are you familiar with the the Malachi Martin interviews? I have, yes, heard some of those. <laughs> so some of the stuff he says, I still think about to this day. Does that have anything to do with your mission? Because he talked about like the world getting more polluted and more like occult things kind of becoming normal and the veil thinning. And he talked about that thinning veil for ve like that it's coming. Do you think that we're seeing more of this stuff and then like the lines are getting blurred because that veil is thinning that he spoke about? Uh, you know, I don't know. There's a lot of controversy around him and, you know, the church is really up in arms about some of the stuff that he posed to be and wasn't. So I, I don't know what weight to put on what he discussed so much as uh, what I was told, um, time is short, these things are desperate. And so they're gonna be acting up more and they're not gonna really care as much that they're being seen as much. Um, shadow people, when they're seen, they like to run off or charge at you, you know, like, dang it, I got spotted, you know, they're trying to do their dirty work under, um, you know, disguise, essentially. Hat man steps out from those shadows, like, get a good look, friend. Yeah. Tell your neighbors, I'm coming, I'm here. Um, it's, it's an outright threat. It's a threat. Um, so the veil thinning, there's portals all around us, you know, in every room and every corner um that they're able to step through so to say it's thinning it, it doesn't matter if we can close our eyes and to feel what's in front of us and judge what's in front of us and to trust or not trust what you're seeing um because we won't be able to trust our eyes they can shape shift uh they could possess friends family um uh, you know, beings, positive alien beings, they will look like the positive ones. So you let your guard down. Oh, I know those positive beings. They disguise themselves and then they take advantage of you, you know, and that's the conflict in alien contact uh, that I wrote about in the secret war book, the first one, because um, the, the these lines are, are absolutely getting hard to distinguish. Yeah. So do you think that they come from other planets or do you think they come from other dimensions? Um, these dimensions, I mean, we go into other dimensions when we go to sleep. So they can pop in, uh, they could come on ships. They come in all shapes and forms, just like we can. Yeah. Uh, we can absolutely change <laughs> and travel. Uh, I, you know, for a while, and still I get these emails every so often of people that saw me someplace and they'll send me their photo and they're like, do I look familiar? And they'll describe where they saw or it was a dream or it was a, and I, it just blows my mind. I, I'd never heard of such a phenomenon like that, or they got my name. I'm supposed to reach out to you. Who are you? What is this? And, uh, it's important to know that, um, you know, when 
and I try to describe this as good as I can, when you get this drive in you and you're like, what is this? I feel like I'm going to run up the wall unless I run out and do something like something is driving you and you don't know what it is, but it's a bigger purpose of something. And I get these, I've had hundreds over the years. Um, and it's like, I'm in Bolivia, I'm in Spain, I'm over here. And I'm like, oh, fellow warriors, welcome. <laughs> you know, it's like, we're waking up and we're stationed on, we're, we're ready. Yeah, these things are acting a fool, but we are aware and we feel like we're on guard. We're ready to kick some butt, but we don't know where, but we're supposed to be on guard and we don't know what that is. But I'm telling you, it's, there is something as much as they prepared these negative things the positive works from the inside out we get born here and do our works these things are hanging over trying to infiltrate and pull strings so they'll pin you down they choke you and say i'm going to kill you oh really you would have done it already instead of waking me up in the middle of the night you know so it's these empty threats trying to convince you they got you oh no you don't got me because you had to tell me buddy so you know it's like we have to realize our power and it's the light is so much more powerful and uh there's so many people they write me like hey heidi i i I just experienced the devil um i don't get into that religious stuff but yeah the devil got me oh you just a religious term for the devil But to say God is just going too far. Oh, I said to throw a shoe at it, you know, I mean, (laughs) throw a shoe (laughs) for real. It's like, wait, you just denounce the positive side. You think if you can bring it in yourself to acknowledge the devil, you better pray there's an opposite force. What's so hard to go there? People are ashamed and it's stupid. (laughs) It's so stupid. So have you so. I haven't had a lot of people say this, but I've had a few people that we've interviewed that talked about the hat man. Hmm. Tell me that their experience wasn't bad. (laughs) And like that one, just from all the stuff I've read and studied, I'm like that, that always concerned me when they would say, Oh, well, I wasn't scared and you know, I wasn't afraid. And, you know, like he would just come and visit me and like, da 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 da, (sighs) sit on my bed. Like people tell, you know, you hear a story. I mean, you've obviously heard a million but like yeah. they sit on the bed and they're scared to death. But like I've had a few people say like, I wasn't scared at all. Yeah. He followed, you know, he, he's followed me my whole life and he hasn't done anything and I'm not scared. Like, what do you think that is? Or have you seen the experience that? So those are the words, the famous last words of the ones we never hear from. I was kidding. Um, but no, <laughs> they, you know, when I started getting those reports, Oh, I had a positive one. Oh, what was positive? Well, I wasn't scared. Oh, good for you. I'm not afraid of him either. I still didn't ask him to come over and sit on my bed, you know, and I don't like the the feel of that. I was just infiltrated. So it's like, uh, I wasn't scared or he's just watching. And I'm like, guess what he's doing? He's observing your weakness. He's very patient just just let him sit there for a few good years and you know it's like as he learns your weakness or when you get sick or if you get injured or if you get depressed guess what he ups the ante he gets a little closer he gets a little closer he i don't care if it's 40 years it goes up and uh you know i'm like why do you think there's an absence of light around him what is that a good thing (laughs) it's just it's not like there's a a barely any light there's an absence of light that's the number one uh description for him and shadow people uh it's like how's that the good guy because you weren't afraid it's like uh uh, good for you you weren't afraid but the day he smiles at you that nice toothy grin with those glowing red eyes i bet you will be especially when you get weak or sick and he punches his fist through his chest you through your chest and tugs on your soul a little bit yeah. i mean that's his favorite pastime snack so just get comfortable with them if that's not a bad experience you know sure. it's silly and then they encourage other people this is how you conjure hat man it, that's one of the reasons why i trademarked it and shadow people to try to pull in some of the bs yeah and the harm 
they're causing harm, you know, uh, I had children that write me and it's like, that's one of the reasons why I did this book, you know, um, for adults and kids to show, you know, I'm like having seven year olds playing with mommy's phone. Mommy thinks I'm crazy. Help me. The man's going to get me, you know? And I'm like, I'll tell mommy to check out this kid's book. Cause I can't really respond, you know, cause I, they told me their age. They always have to say their age. So, um, we got to clear this up out there. It's uh it's a shame. They're- yeah, and are we are we surprised if the hat man <laughs> is the devil? I mean, the devil's known as the great deceiver. So he why wouldn't he deceive some people into thinking that he's not bad? <laughs> well, he likes to also get people comfortable with him, so they let their guard down. Uh he loves to groom children like a pervert would. He loves to come around children. Oh, he's always been there since I was five. So you're used to the presence. I'm like, ah, there it is. I'm like, so he's he's waiting. He's grooming you. So you're you're comfortable with a perv in your room, essentially, because he scratches, he bites, he rapes men, children. Uh, it doesn't matter what you are, who you are. He'll do whatever it takes to degrade you and choke you within an inch of your life. Um, it's disgusting. And then they're like, but I'm not afraid, so he's okay. No. Man, there's there's one story in your uh, Hatman book that that gave me chills so bad when I first read it about when he was like going around to different houses and looking in their windows. Oh. Those two kids, and then they and and he was like lightning fast, and then he and then they like decided to look out their window one more time, and they oh. like, saw him, and then fortunately, like their their mom or whatever was was mm. it. She, the, at least she like believed them and prayed with them and stuff like that, which was cool. Yeah. But I I had read that story and then um <clears throat> I was going on a walk around the neighbor or around where I work. Sometimes I I go on walks or, on my lunch break, and um I I walk past one of those neighborhood watch signs. And it looks like the Hat Man. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> yeah. Like, I wonder if people have seen that. And that was the person who made that sign. <laughs> the perv in your window is hat man. <laughs> it's a common practice of his for some reason to peek in people's windows. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's it's such a uh, such a disgusting thing when you think about what he's after and what he's here for, and and to see the numbers jump as they have uh, should make everybody uncomfortable. Make, should make everybody want to dig a little deeper into their faith. And uh, it's one of the reasons why I wrote, um, as I got so many people like, I don't get into that faith or religious thing. And, and it, it's like, why do people feel like they have to be so perfect in their faith? I mean, the size of a mustard seed that's in the Bible, it's all you need. So I, I wrote a book called um, The Other F Word how to find faith and laugh at yourself while trying, you know, with cartoons and stuff and just had a ball with it. Um, because people know God made us all messed up and flawed. We're when we accept that, but we're supposed to be perfect in our faith. No way possible. There's no way possible. I've seen Jesus and I'm not perfect in my faith. And, and people are like, and I've seen him more than once now and I still mess up. And, uh, People are like, oh, wow, you know, it must be so cool that you got to see him. I said, oh, I have no doubt in his existence. I said, but it's not something I'm so proud of because how hard was my head that he had to come down personally and smack me and say, hello, (laughs) Heidi, I'm real. Why, you know, and I was about to make a big mistake with this book, The Secret War, that was going to wake up the world to a phenomenon uh, they'd never heard of. So I think he's like, oh, let me get down there and shake this one up. But, you know, what's that? Uh, Blessed are those who believe and have not seen, you know, that believe in him and, and didn't have to have a personal visit. I think that's more powerful of faith. Um, and I think we could all get there, but we're going to be flawed about it. And it's OK. It's OK. Yeah, you just seem to be more you just seem to see more in general than than most people you know whether yeah. it be jesus or aliens or the negative you, you yeah. see a lot 
You know what? It, I never really thought about that so much because um, I was raised in a haunted house and me and my sisters talked about what we've seen, you know, in the, in the haunted house. I mean, we're just open about it. And I, you know, people say, oh, you must be psychic. You must be. I'm like, I'm just bad luck. I just have bad luck. I'm tripping into these things and I don't know why. Um, but I never put a title on it. I never understood um why that was all happening to me and uh and i just like accepted it and moved on like even like the jesus encounters i never thought like i bet nobody's had this type of experience i never thought about it but um i've gotten more answers recently that has really shaken me um to a a different level of, of understanding and i do know now why and uh, I'm trying to figure out the best way to talk about all of that because uh, it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. And I just never anticipated um, some of this. Um, you, Matt, you've read the Secret War book. I don't know if you remember what uh, Calf, the being, mm-hmm. said about me in there. But yeah, I might have taken it out of there actually. If you if it's the ebook you read and not the book, <laughs> yeah, it's the, it's the ebook. I think I first uh, read it like, man, it probably was like four years ago. Okay, yeah, and I won't quiz you then, but yeah, <laughs> I'll be talking more about some of that because um, I just have no words for this stuff. That's um. So when you finally drop it, is it going to be on coast to coast? Do you think? they asked me to uh to do that and i just oh man (laughs) yeah i'd like to it's just so much i i just i'm still trying to figure some of this stuff out but uh yeah you seem really burdened by it yeah it's heavy it's heavy and you know it's it's just it's just so much i i just i just keep saying the same thing over because it's like i i just wouldn't have imagined this so so I've heard you reference your haunted house. Um, <laughs> I don't know if I've ever heard you tell a story about it. Oh, but, like it's in, it's in the Secret War book. Secret War book. It's also in the Hatman book. Oh, the okay, Hat see. <laughs> okay. Oh, all right, Margaret speaks. Oh, wow. she saw you that guys, one. I just read your Hatman book, Heidi. Uh, okay, cool. <laughs> I have severe ADHD, and reading a book scares me to absolute death. So uh, I listen to everything. So you ever make an audio book. I okay. Think I'll be great, but like okay. reading stuff, I'm like, I will do that. Sorry, will, not, uh, not just for me, but I'm sure maybe other people would appreciate it. I've had a lot of people ask, and it's like, um, I mean, you guys hear of all the stuff I've got myself involved in, and it's like I'm cartooning, I'm writing another book, I got this, you know. So it's it's hard for me to to, uh, and I still practice as a therapist, you know. So it's just a lot. Um, you wear a lot of hats, pun intended. Uh, yeah, I do. <laughs> but yeah, I will, I will do that. But yeah, the haunting, um, it, it was obviously a, it was something really dark that was messing with us. Um, I'll, I'll tell you really quickly, we had poltergeist like activity, things were moving, uh, things were seen and photos, um, all sorts of stuff. Um, it, it was just and loud knockings. And it never dawned on me what exactly it could have been. Everybody say my mother had passed earlier in the year when it started on Christmas Day. Everybody's like, oh, it's your mother. I'm like, I'm seven years old. My sister was five. Why would mom want to torture us? You know, it makes no sense. But um, what's more protective than a mother's love? So when she left, we were just left out into the elements and I didn't know what my future held at that stage, that's for sure. But that was my first ghostly confrontation where I essentially took one of them on um, to get them to stop playing the organ <laughs> in front of my siblings. So, uh, but yeah, but I know now it was shadow people because uh, a black thing with glowing red eyes attacked my stepbrother. I never put two and two together before that. So, oh, wow. So you think so it was shadow people for sure? It was. It was, yeah, it was um, absolutely uh, one of our, our safe havens in the haunted house was <laughs> the bathroom because it had a lock on it. So we all run in there and lock the door. It's like, oh, the house is going mental again, you know, 
and uh they did that at my my stepbrother and my older sister because there are loud bangings all over the house and they lock themselves in the bathroom for hours and my stepbrother's like i'm sick of this you know he opens up the door and he's like all right i'm sick of you come on take me on if you're so bad and this thing flew in his face with glory red eyes scratched his face all up and my sister said i didn't know he could scream like a girl he screamed so high and ran in the bathroom his face was bloodied and my dad's like obviously there's a bat in the house yeah right there's no bat in the house (laughs) yeah that's so scary was that the head and shoulders thing uh he said you know it it didn't sound like it was huge it was but if he said it flew yeah absolutely flew and um yeah, you know, it's so weird because my siblings experience a lot of stuff with me, but they won't talk about it. In fact, one refuses. Um, yeah. But, um, you know, what's disturbing, the day I put the hat man image on my website, my younger sister liked to pop over and just not saying when she's coming. And I'm like, she's like, how do you need to talk to you? I'm like, oh, I got to show you the new image on my website. I got to talk to you. I'm like, no, look, look what I got. Open up the website. And it was hat man and she screamed oh that's what i want to talk to you about oh my god and i was like what what and she's like and she told me how he appeared <laughs> she she was going down to her basement uh to get her clothes out of the dryer and she said heidi it rose up from behind the dryer and just you know hulked over her she's like <laughs> Heidi, I don't think I hit a stair on the way up and I knocked over my child. <laughs> oh, no. She's like, she's like, and I ran out of the house and the child ran after her. And, uh, and then he appeared in her backseat of her car. I mean, he's made himself so apparent to know he hears and he sees what I'm doing. And uh, people reach out to me and he starts acting up and I'm like, because he knows his time is limited. Take it as a compliment. You know, that if he's really putting a lot of effort on a person, I'd say take it as a compliment because he's obviously trying to stomp out your very bright light. He can't take it. Yeah. <laughs> well, and like, like personally, I've noticed that when we started bringing attention, to, like when you started, when you first started bringing attention to it, mm-hmm. just in general, mm-hmm. like um, just last week when like, you had sent me a message and it was like kind of later at night and right at the same time, somebody who'd been a previous guest had done art <laughs> and it was like something about like a sleep demon or something like that. I forgot what it was, but anyway, he tagged me in a comment that someone wrote and this guy listed out his hat man experience. <laughs> and like the guy who had been on our show was like, Oh, you got to talk to these guys. You got to talk to these guys. But it's like, sometimes when you start talking about it, like, um, like before we ever did the podcast, like Matt and I like have worked together for a long time, but um, I was listening to like a totally different podcast. I wish I could know. I wish I could. I tried to find it, but I can't find it. But there was this guy who um, he had grew up in an extremely haunted house, come to Christ. And like he would go to people's house and like remove things from their house and like pray over people, blah, blah, blah. But mm-hmm. like um, when I made the correlation with him was this gentleman, I feel like the guy's name is Doug, but he's like a pastor and he, he prays stuff off of people. But he said that this kid had all these like terrible experiences and that like nobody else would see it, but this child. And that like what he went into the child's room and he started commanding that whatever it was come out and show itself. And he said, first came out this fallen angel. And Mm -hmm. it like said, told him it was a fallen angel. And then right next to him came out the hat man. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Matt, that's what your brother saw. Your brother saw that. Uh, And like during that time, like I kid you not, I was so I would drive around a lot for my portion of our job. And mm -hmm. one day I was listening to one of the like a hat man podcast because I just went on to, you know, hat man um, like rabbit hole. And this big black hat flew across the road. (laughs) Like I, I it was a black cowboy hat. Just I was driving and it just rolled across the road. Do you find that he sends you symbols like like little uh, not symbols signals signals just saying like, hey, I know you're on to me here. Yes, yes, I I had. (laughs) This sounds 
crazy, but I got a, 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 a fortune cookie and it says, uh, said a, a, a tall, and this is before I really was discussing hat man a whole lot. Um, and it said a man in a black suit and hat will greet you soon. And I was like, well, that's weird. I showed my friends like, that's bizarre, isn't it? That? Oh, so weird. And I was doing a road trip with my friends and <laughs> we're on this highway and it was like a two lane. And this man comes parallel to the car and there's nobody around. And my friends are like, Heidi, look at him. Exact with the wide brim hat and the suit. And he is just hunched over the wheel. And it's like, I mean, I get chills thinking about it because he didn't look to the right. He didn't. And, it, and he just took off really, really fast. And I'm like, he really did show up, but it was exact. So, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely get that. Those hints. But yeah, the little. Yeah, mm-hmm. I saw that black hat roll across the ground. And I was like, Are you kidding me? Like, that's where on earth did that come from? That is funny. You think he picks his look because it's like distinctive nowadays, like because it stands out now. So people can be like that, the hat man, you know, like it's, Mm. you know, I wonder if because you don't normally see people with like fedoras or wide brimmed hats (laughs) and trench coats anymore. Yeah, that's true. Um, You know, he he changes it up a little bit, too. And sometimes he doesn't wear a hat. Um, But uh I, I think it's definitely done to be distinctive. And so, you know, and so your neighbor knows, so your cousin knows you're all experiencing him. And it's like to get a, an ounce of respect, it's respectful fear and a recognition of his power. He's very powerful. I wouldn't challenge him. Um, you know, I would stand my famous. ground. I'm sorry. It almost seems like he's trying to become famous too. Like... Yeah. Um, but, you know, he's been doing this for a long time. And uh, you'd ask, like, how long ago was the earliest one? One thing I was told by these beings was, you know, there's going to be a lot of people wanting to dig in the history of this stuff. And it's not important. What's happening today is important. Put your energy there, what's happening today, because there's too many people being lost to this. And I've heard people dig and say, it's gin, it's that. I'm like, does it matter? Yeah. No doesn't matter your your friend might die tonight you know a stranger might die tonight at the hands of these things uh people oh, people that are, are thought to attempt suicide they don't remember attempting suicide but they wake up strapped down in a hospital bed and there's hat man next to their bed you know what's like those little girls like those little girls in wisconsin who saw the slender man quote unquote and they killed their friend or something Yes. Yeah. I've talked about that on the show. So like <laughs> that's right in Milwaukee. Yes. It happened 15 minutes from my family's home. Uh, was it two weeks after I published the book on hat man exclusively on hat man? He never confronted me directly until I was about to put that book out and he came after my patients. He came after uh, my patient two days in a row in front of everybody. Um, just horrible. He came into my room. He's never done that. Um, it just very bold. And then 15 minutes from my family's home, I, I took it personal. <laughs> and and I don't know if you know the backstory with those two little girls. One little girl was able to convince the other that Slender Man was real because she said, I remember him. I saw him when I was little. <laughs> Yeah, how do you see him? It was Hat Man. Is Slender Man such a ripoff of Hat Man? I don't know what is. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I took it personal. And they attacked their little friend. And dude, it's it's so oh, it's so heavy and so dark. But you know what? It's on like Donkey Kong. We're going to win. You know, <laughs> it let, let him get his little swipes in, you know. Um, and I, And again, I tell people, <laughs> they write me and they're like, I've been having stuff going on for 30 years. I'm like, Ooh, who are you <laughs> that he's put so much work into you? Like you are a little powerhouse. He hates your guts. Take that as a compliment. And they don't get it. Yeah. I don't see the humor in this. I'm like, learn to laugh because he hates that. And it, it, it is empowering to have humor. Um, so many people, they get oppressed, depressed, and then possessed. We can't do that. 
we have got to realize our power and through God, through Jesus, uh, who's got our back in this, you're not alone ever. And, uh, a room never feels empty to me. It just doesn't. I feel him always. And I, I, I've hoped over the years to have something, some ounce of to push and show people the reality, how aware, <laughs> how aware Christ is. I mean, I, as a biggest skeptic and, and to be met with him and the many times that I have now, I just, I, I've just been floored, just floored by him. And one of the times that I'd seen him, he made it very clear. He felt everything and was aware of everything. And most importantly, very anxious to return, very anxious to return. But he was waiting on one thing to happen. And I don't know what it is. I don't. But uh, I'll never forget that feeling coming off of him. And he didn't have anything to say. He just push that emotion and just the feel that the love you just can't imagine so he's very aware and uh i think we're in you know people say end times i say time of change this planet ain't going anywhere but we might <laughs> so so okay i have to ask you this question this has like been on my mind it's kind of a goofy one so maybe you'll enjoy it sure um what do you think so hatman has been trending i don't know if you're on tiktok at all mm. hatman has been like like severely trending on tiktok yeah and um everybody makes the correlation with the benadryl uh. so, like i that makes it makes me so annoyed because i've taken benadryl a million times nothing's ever happened but like it's, what it's a pretty high dose What's that? It's a pretty high dose that you have to take. Oh, you have to take a lot? Yeah. Oh, well, I guess I'm just... Um, But yeah, I keep seeing this everywhere and people talking about this and the better... What, what are your thoughts on this? Or you're just like, I created this thing and now people are like, well, take Benadryl and see him. <laughs> <sighs> I think he's very happy and welcoming to those people. That's what I think. And they're very there i thought people were ignorant trying to do grave rubbings and conjure up things in a graveyard they have taken the biggest tumble and fall into the stupidity of trying to drug themselves into meeting the devil (laughs) how stupid can you be it is so i mean i heard a child died uh i don't anticipate um it getting much better with this curiosity that people have about, uh, uh, you know, they, they feel dead inside and they want to know, is there really a soul? And they want to poke, poke a stick at it and see if it's alive. They're the stupid person in the movie poking a stick at the monster to see if it's dead, you know, before they got the car running. I mean, it's stupid. I, I just, uh, I don't even know how to, 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 tackle that because it's like it's it's a something that was so preciously handed over to be delivered a certain way only to have people trying to make a dime off from TikTok to to sell themselves as being I'm the authority no I'm the authority oh I know this stuff and they're they're getting people into trouble and guess what when you cross over and you will because that's one thing you're guaranteed to get out of this life is you're going to die. All those people that you encourage to do this garbage, it ain't going to look good on you (laughs) and then you're going down for it. So is it really worth it when you could die tomorrow knowing you brought somebody else's soul with you? That's stupid. Ugh. Yeah. It's pretty, it's pretty messed up. Have you um, heard of like, I did a little looking into this. Um, Have you heard of the realm that he takes people to? It's called Ariel. Or do you think that's totally stupid? I think that's that cult idiot, Yahoo, who's saying if you even touch Benadryl, you've given your soul over. First off, your soul can't be given to anybody or anything. 
doesn't belong to anybody but God, you know? So they could make up their little trashy stuff all they want. There's no, there's no place he's going to take you, (laughs) but hell. Um, But he collects, he collects souls. Uh, He does, but how could, how lonely and, and uh, I don't know, stupid and, and ignorant can a person be to create this whole realm of come join me into hat man's reality. It's so bad. Yeah. Uh, I just, you know, why don't you shoot yourself in the both feet while you're at it? You know, it's like, who would want to do this? Uh, it's, it makes no sense, but they need to realize there's something bigger and greater than themselves and they don't care where they get it. And the darkness is just so happy to oblige and prove it's real. So God doesn't have to do that. That's a really profound point. That is a really profound point. Um, I don't. So Matt has had some hat man dreams. Mm. I had a weird hat man encounter that was, I don't know what you'd call it. Margaret, you have luckily not had. Margaret, <laughs> she's, she's made it out. So far. So far, so good. But um, yeah, I mean, what do you think the whole mission is behind it? You know, because like to me, I've always to me, I've always tried to figure out like what it is or who it is. And I've had my personally, I've had a hard time with it being the devil only because the only thing really the Bible tells you is that he can appear as an angel of light. So to to hide behind a persona like that is so strange to me. You know what I mean? Because like, I feel like Satan himself is always like, he's trying to get you on a side, but like the hat man seems to have, like when you talk to, when you hear people talk or you read the stories, it's always like dread, you know, like people won't talk about it for 20 years. Like it's so bad that it Mm -hmm. just seems, I don't know. To me, I'm like trying to figure out like what angle this is. Like it's not advantageous for. Yeah. It doesn't seem like, cause it seems like the devil's more like, I'm going to tell you like, 99% 99% truth and hope that 1% leads you off. Mm-hmm. You know, like, I don't know. To me, it just, I've always, that's just something I struggle with. Well, the one thing that it helps him though, when you see him, there is fear, right. <laughs> especially if he's really got his, his gaze as upon you and you know it and you are in fear. You're not as powerful when you're in fear, you don't feel crafty. You don't feel fast. <laughs> you don't feel like, you don't feel like, uh, uh, your, your full potential is at hand. He likes to get people at that point. He wants to feel that like, Oh, that's the button. It's like putting his finger in the wound and wiggling it around. Ah, that's what gets you. Okay. And until he gets people at that level, uh, you know, people are like, well, he didn't scare me. Oh, he's, he will, <laughs> right. he will, he's studying you. He'll find that little spot. Oh, are you sick now? Or are you drunk or high? Oh yeah. I'll take advantage then, you know? Um, so it's like, there is an advantage to him appearing in this horrible form. Absolutely. Because he doesn't want to be mistaken for a beautiful angel. No. No, he wouldn't want that. <laughs> you might look into God or the Bible or something, you yeah. know. But uh, you know, not to say that the devil wouldn't, but uh this yeah. is really working for him. Look at their flocking to him right. and stoning themselves out on Benadryl to reach him because he's bored people with no life. Uh it's working. It is working. It is. And and some people have said, Why did you tell people he's there? I'm like, he was there before. I, I still almost on a weekly basis get I, an email that says, I thought I was the only one. So it's not that my stuff is waking, you know, bringing it to people. People right. are waking up to realize it's widespread. Oh my God. You know, um, and you know, with this other shoe to drop, uh, it's just, it's so much. And you want to hear something really kind of wild. Always. <laughs> the answer to that question is always. Please. Always. Well, you know, there. I, I don't know if you guys have heard me talk about, uh, there's a television series called Millennium. It's a spinoff of X-Files. Had you ever seen that? <clears throat> it's an older show. Not to find it's, it. Especially the third and final season, they decided to focus on the apocalypse. 
end of times, you know, and how the this secret group, government group, uh, that would do special uh, advice to the X Files crew, you know, uh, Skull, uh, Mulder and Scully, you know, and uh, they get their own spinoff, and it's the countdown to the new millennium, the the year two thousand, and uh, that's when their the show came out, <clears throat> and. Um, Third and final season, I'm sitting there watching it with my friends, and I got up to grab something from the fridge and go to sit down, and they introduce a new character. And they say, Agent Hollis? We froze. Me and my friends froze. And I, and I, I missed a part. When I had stepped away, my friends are like, Heidi, come here. There's a lady on TV who looks just like you. I'm like, oh, shut up. I sit down, and they call her Agent Hollis. And I was like... It's so weird because it's like I'm still friends with uh, one of the people who's there and they're like, I'll never forget that chill in the room. And we all got quiet. I said, yeah, because you just said she looked like me and she does. And then they introduce her sister. Same nickname I gave my sister. Then they introduce her father that she didn't know worked for the government, had my dad's first and last name. If I weren't the only black lady doing what I do, this might be a coincidence. (laughs) these characters look just like me and my family and they had our names and our faces and i'm like and it's about the apocalypse now that was the year 2000 1999 actually oh yeah i i had it's come full circle you know and um some of the conversations and, and the things I had to rewatch the series so the, the last season of it. And guess what? You know, everything is streaming. Not that show. Oh, you can't, really? you can't get it on Blu-ray either. Can't, it, just DVD, just DVD. Now, why, why is that? So I had to find a bootleg version of it online. <laughs> so it's called millennium millennium. Frank black oh, founder. Yep. Emma yep. Mm-hmm. Agent Hollis. Oh my gosh. Yep. That's We're here. Cool. I did mine. That's wild. <laughs> it was mental. It was mental. They're like and sending you a little message, like, we know. Beyond. Um, and I've gotten some answers about that, and I'm still working it out. And I'm like, and she didn't know her father was involved in the government. Mm. And I didn't either. <laughs> didn't either you know it's it's creepy and it's like okay and here we are at these times right now i just told people about the devil in the modern world and his minions uh you know it's like where are we at right now so um it's a it's a weird time that we're in right now (laughs) yeah it is no it's definitely we're definitely in a huge transition and I, i fear for what the next stage is well, people have to get right with their faith more right. than anything. Um, and to have no doubts in it is difficult. I get it. I feel I cheated in my faith because he had to show up, you know. Um, but I, I marvel at people who can carry on and, and feel and hear without the physical him showing up. And, and being able to feel their full human potential with that. Cause we, we always kind of gravitate towards knowing there's something else. And yeah. let's pray that people realize it's usually on the good side, um, unless you're Hitler, you know, it's like, I, I just, uh, I don't know. I mean, we've got to, we've got to nudge people in the right direction and um, mm-hmm. it's important. I'm just I'm just happy that the paranormal community is starting to acknowledge that you call on the name of Jesus and whatever it is goes. I I, yeah. I love that. I yeah. love it. and we're and they're starting to make the connection, you know, like you know. But like one thing yeah. that like Heidi says is that, you know, you have to have faith behind it. And I've I've heard some stories where people say they didn't have faith, but I and and the not just the hat man, but the darkness, whatever form goes away. But I'm like, you know, they have to have faith. I, I believe, you know, in that one podcast that I'm referencing, you guys know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. I believe he had faith. He just doesn't want to talk about it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, there's a, yeah, we, have you heard of the Confessionals podcast? No. 
She's too busy. To yeah, she's to too busy. To but if, if you ever find <laughs> if you if you want to listen to a, it, the, the podcast is like three and a half hours long. Mm. It's the wildest story I've ever heard in my life. Okay. Ever, ever. It's called like, what is it called? Like portal death cult or something like that. It's about this guy going getting yeah. led to Joshua Tree and they have this like satanic occult and they see like vampires and all these portals and stuff and 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 they're trying to sacrifice him but he keeps saying i walk with jesus i walk with jesus and he gets let out huh. even though they're trying to get him he just keeps saying i'm i but he claims not to be a religious person or anything like that but i believe he had to have faith right in order mm. for that to work yeah and that was really that was really <laughs> cool because yeah there was some crazy stuff happening there and he called on the name of jesus and jesus it wasn't it wasn't like he delivered him right away. He, he let him battle. Yeah, it was a battle all the way uphill for this guy and he wow. made it out. But like wow. he, he just kept saying, I walk with Jesus. And they, they even laughed at him a little bit, right? Weren't they like laughing at him? Yeah. Yeah. yeah the he nervous like laugh. Laughing, <laughs> like, yeah, like an evil laugh, like, oh, you don't walk with Jesus, like you're with us. And he, right. he got out. But Jesus brought him through and it was cool. But yeah. it's just cool to hear that. You know what I mean? Like you don't hear that a lot, but you're hearing it more. Oh, I've been saying it for over 20 years on coast and all my shows have been doing for a long time. I'm like Jesus rebukes all of it. Why does that work? You know, but without it, you know, it was cool too. doing all these shows as I have is getting the emails. You're having the conversations with people who are like, I tuned into your show to hear something paranormal. And you talked about Jesus. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, no, it's exactly. Very- very rare did I get somebody say quit that or give me any kind of static about it. If anything, they said I laughed too much. And I said, you know what? I'd rather have joy than be a Mr. Grumpy Pants to tell somebody they're too joyous. How about that? You know, um, and it's like, this is who I am. This is how I tackle everything. You know, um, you know, it, it's like, <laughs> I I don't know how best to be. And, and I don't think uh, I'd be able to talk on any of these subjects and create a balance. I mean, I, I mean, I could, if you look at it on paper, I look like a loon. She saw Jesus, she's seen angels, you know, shadow people, all that. And it's like, and, and the cool thing, you know, working as a medical professional and I'm working with other therapists, physical therapists, speech pathologists, doctors and nurses, and, and they all are aware of me. And they're like, you know what, Heidi? If this came out of anybody else, I wouldn't believe them. I wouldn't. But it's coming out of you and you're a real person. And you you don't do this like other people with a flashlight under your chin being all spooky or anything. You know, so it's like, how do you get people to be more comfortable and ask questions? Be who you are. Because this is who I am all day. I'm not going to change just to do this or to do that. Um, you know, if I was in this to make a buck, boy, did I make the wrong gamble because I would make more as a therapist. This is not the business you go into. I have eight books published and it's like, I've been doing this for such a long time, but being the only black woman doing this stuff in the broad spectrum I do and still no, a, a guy, it, this is true. Guys can st- go and, you know, jump into these fields a lot easier and they've taken my material and they're doing great. They're, they, you know, they're great. They're being invited to speak all over the country using my material uh, and my trademarks. It's, uh, you know, what the heck? What is that? You know, and it's like, I don't understand. It's like, because people have a certain persona that they think you have to have to talk about this stuff. But how did I get effective, uh, you know, to to put the word out to millions worldwide? Mm-hmm. It's because of having the stance that I do. And and it's like, I don't know how else to keep it real and, and relatable. And uh, I think it's important with you guys going forward um, with whatever you do in life. It's like, always be you. Don't speak at a level that you're not. I hate when, I hate when uh, I've had friends in the past that's like, they get into these topics and suddenly they're educated on it and they use these fluffy words. And, and I'm like, I don't know what you're saying. I've been doing this a long time. Uh, you know, c- can we just have a conversation? Like, you know, even I write my books the same way as I speak. It's like, yeah. I don't want to seem like I'm talking over people's heads. When I have patients, I don't use big medical terms. So they don't get it. So why do that to them? I want them to know what I'm talking about. So 
don't change your language or change your stance just because you're hoping to make a buck that it, it's very unlikely that'll happen <laughs> well, we know. We know. You, yeah you do this because you're passionate and you want to make a difference and um and if jesus asks you to do something do it yeah so <laughs> and then that's like that's what we've kind of not kind of that's what what we do is we, we're yeah. so happy to just hear people's stories let people talk mm-hmm. like a lot of times we don't do much of the talking like we'll ask a few pointed questions here and there but like it's really about just letting people get it out yeah and then like obviously like we share our faith like when asked and like i've like we've literally had satanists it, like a, a, a One guest we had was a Luciferian and he thanked us. He's like, I've never sat in a room full of Christians and felt more comfortable. That's that's amazing. (laughs) But we get a lot of crap from Christians. Oh, do you? Yeah, we do. But like, um, because they, I don't know. I don't know. Somehow it doesn't fit in their box. It doesn't fit in their box. And somehow down the line, they've this, 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 I don't know, decided that the Bible and Jesus and everything isn't paranormal, which I'm like, very supernatural. Uh, I didn't, you know, I feel like I'm rediscovering a whole different chapter out there. I didn't know. The Catholics use the word supernatural and mystical more than I ever have in my life. Yeah. <laughs> Catholics are way more comfortable with like the mystery of God. I've, yeah. I've mm-hmm. been finding. Yeah. And, like It's like a lot of like, almost like people from like our church, like our church that we go to and like, and uh, Christians like that would be in our camp. You would, probably say are like they have the most like boxes and they don't they don't want god to be a mystery at all they they study it yeah (laughs) yeah look for the facts and and it's like i'm i'm learning it's interesting how uh they are looking for those examples of to help prove to people you know scientifically even to to gain faith like that's that's a big part of them. And I, I feel silly to have having missed it all these years because they seem so, so far off from what I'm used to. Um, you know, us uh, Protestants were like, there's those few things we just don't get. And so it's a mental block. But then I started looking further and I'm like, oh, I see why the saints. Oh, you're looking for an example to show the bad teenager down the street this guy was bad too but look he turned his life around okay i get that you know it's interesting it's really interesting so that's something a bigger mystery to dig into absolutely yeah but uh i i just find it um i find it encouraging that people are waking up more i mean i don't know if you've heard oh gosh what's that book called a wind in the house of islam and there's other books like it people are experiencing hold on jesus <laughs> in the middle of the middle eastern countries and and they don't they're not about jesus you know they're they're muslim and he shows up and says look into me read up on me and he doesn't come once I'm in this book that's like night after night, Jesus keeps coming. Okay, I'm going to look into you. Who are you? And these secret churches are popping up, underground churches in these Muslim nations because Jesus is showing up so much. Yeah. It's amazing. It's amazing. I'm like, what is this? So um, you can't say that you don't know because it's he's making himself available, you know? Oh, yeah. So it's it's yeah. amazing. And, and, you know, there's a lot of hope. We, we look at all the dread in the world and it's like, but there's a lot of good and there's a lot of people lost. Um, it breaks my heart that people have had bad experiences in their faith. Therefore, they turn their back on it yeah. and their kids. And, um, you know, nobody says that you have to sit in a group to be okay with God, but it helps. How are you going to learn about it? <laughs> well, oh, yeah. You know, don't. Yeah don't forsake the assembly of the the brethren. No, you need it. You need community and you need people. And I don't Mm -hmm. know, I've talked to people uh, that have like fallen away and I'm just like, you had problems with people. You didn't have problems with Jesus. 
Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, and it's like Jesus also had problems with people and they were called Pharisees. So what you were dealing with was a Pharisee. You yeah. weren't dealing with like Christ, you know, like there's no condemnation in Christ Jesus. If you yeah. felt that that wasn't from God. So like you have to dig and like I've had people look me like look at me like I was crazy. And, I'm, and like because it <laughs> does, they doesn't they don't realize that like you're dealing with a person who's flawed. Yeah. You're looking to them more than you're looking to Jesus, who's not flawed. Yes, uh, it's uh, a it's a bit of a learning curve. I Thanks I saw a lady that was um, she'd been abused, unfortunately, by some priests, and uh, and I'm like, you know, you know, get over it, lady. Come on, you go to God. And she took a moment and she goes, and I was an interview. I was watching this on a show. She goes, imagine every time you thought of God, you thought of being abused. I was like, oh, ow, okay. I That is a huge lump to get over. It's like, what do you, what do you say? And it's like, that's a lot of pain to get past um, because it, it just seemed like a, 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 a song and dance, you know, it was all fake. How could that be? Cause he hurt me so bad. Yeah. <clears throat> so it's a lot of healing that's got it going out there. And, uh, yeah, you know, prayer does work, but I think being available, helping each other out, that's even more powerful sometimes to be there in the prayer with the person, you know? Sure, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Well, selfishly, I feel like we could keep you for five hours. Yeah, but... we should probably wrap it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I'll, can I give uh, information for people that want to reach out? Um, oh yeah, yeah. Give your. Um, I always ask people, what's your what's your final thought? What's your parting gift? What what yeah. do you impart to people who've made it this far with us? Yeah. Um. You know what? I always like to tell people to not be so entertained, uh, with the things that are around them. You know, look further, look deeper, close your eyes, feel it out, turn the phone off, push it over, across the room. You know, whatever, and. Uh, you know, get back in touch with your roots. Something's pulling at you for a reason to see if there's something more. Don't look into the negative. Look into the positive because the positive rules and good guys always win in the end. Um, and, and I want to tell people too, if there's anything they've experienced out of the ordinary, uh, to write me at HeidiHollis.com. Um, and uh, yeah, and Dark Becomes Light is my podcast and my YouTube channel. Heidi Hollis and most of my social media is at one Heidi Hollis, uh, just a one in front of my name. So. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being on. Maybe it's spiritual. Yeah. Um, thanks for thank having you. me. Yeah. It's been an honor. And I said, we could probably talk to you forever, but <laughs> you have things you want to do. But, oh, it's uh, all good. but uh, yeah, thanks again for coming on and like really appreciate it. Yeah. And sorry I had to leave so much. My dog's trying to wake up my kids. <laughs> oh, okay. thank you guys. Thank you, Matt, Raphael, and, and Margaret. This is awesome. Thank awesome. you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Have a good night. You too.